Hi everyone, this is Saman Fatima and we are back again with another episode with Off the Record with me, Saman. And we'll cover today a different trajectory for me. Um, I being in the central time zone and we're covering a college and a student and now a working professional from, uh, you know, the Phoenix side. So we're majorly now moving on to the mountain time as well. So we'll have more discussions around and you might have known if I've mentioned Phoenix. So we know what the university is and what are we going to talk about. So it's about Arizona State University and we have Madan here and I'd really like to welcome him as part of ITSP Magazine podcast. And I let him introduce himself about what he did, where is he, where did he came from, and all of those details. So, welcome, Madhu. Hey, Saman. Uh, firstly, thanks for uh, welcoming me to the Off the Record with Saman podcast. It's been due for a while, right? I mean, we're in talks for almost two weeks, Saman, and yeah. only it's happening. <laughs> That's yeah. why the mention that we are in different time zones. So, guys, it is it is difficult to get hold of the time zones. Yeah, uh, yeah, completely agree to your point, yeah. Yeah, uh, to start with, uh, uh, this is Madan Madlamodi, uh, basically from South of India, uh, like Nellur, uh, to be precise, uh, which is an Andhra Pradesh state. Uh, if I have to be more specific, uh, people might be knowing uh, ISRO rocket launching center, STAR. So I'm just right next to it. I can see rockets flying quite often. Uh, yeah, I did my bachelor's back in 2016 uh, from Mamata University of Bangalore, and then uh, uh, I was with a couple of companies back in India. I worked with um, a startup named uh, Bubble Networks uh, for, uh, for like six months time and then uh, started working as a full-time employee to uh, Capgemini uh, back in 2017, Feb, I guess. Yeah, I was there for around four and a half years time and, and then uh, back in 2021, I moved to US uh, to pursue my master's in uh, Arizona State University uh, and my major is in information technology and uh, project management. Focus area into data analytics and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So it's pretty much uh, a brief background about me. I'm currently working with uh, CSW Insurance Group. Uh, it's an automobile insurance company uh, working as a software developer three. And uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm as of now. Thank you so much. And that's a, a really like a fun introduction to know like the roots. And that that that's really like I wasn't also aware that you're so near to that ISRO rocket center where you could see a lot of things live. So that's something you know I also got to know along with the other folks who are watching you right now. So you know we do not have to talk. You know, uh, like we know a lot of things about Arizona State University. We know it's like at the deserted place and a lot of other things. We would get down to the weather and how things you managed up there. But uh, before we head down to those questions, we'd like to know more about what was your course and how was the curriculum and how were you able to uh, shoot it down that, okay, this is the one course and this is the college that I wanted to go for my master's. Okay, uh, so there's a bit of background for that. Uh, it was it started back in 2016 only. Soon after my graduation, I thought of uh, coming to US to do my masters, and uh, even that time, ASU was my one of the top universities uh, in my priority list, considering my background and the kind of weather uh, it is here. Like it's little hot here, but I'll come to the point later. Uh, but yeah, so uh, especially with the kind of innovation stuff they do and the curriculums they have, uh, job opportunities and all of me are like. There are some multiple factors involved here, so which I choose ASU uh, as my uh, option. And uh, yeah, so to be precise, uh, it all started back in 2016. And then even in 21, when I wanted to pursue master's, uh, there are a couple of things, priorities actually. Um, 2016 to 21, things change. I got married in between 2020. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is an interesting topic, which you know. And uh, yeah, so me and my wife, uh, wanted to do masters together. Back in 2020, we got married and then started away a uh, plan to do masters in 21 August. Um, she carries around four years of experience and um, we're more or less same uh, with, with professional experience. So uh, the thing is we have to get into same university. It's a planned one. It's a calculated risk, I would say. Uh, we applied to similar universities, but uh, we have we have mind in that we have to get into uh, data analytics uh, into a good reputed university. And uh, 
ASU has this uh, uh, advantage actually. So they have uh, multiple focus areas. Even we can opt uh, courses from interdisciplinary, like multiple uh, streams. So it's not just sticking to, even though my uh, stream is IT information technology and project management, I can opt courses from software engineering and computer science. So uh, it got the flexibility. So uh, that's one of the major aspects why I uh, prefer ASU. And uh, yeah, uh, things fall into place and then yeah, uh, we applied to around five universities and then luckily we got admits to all the universities and this was my top priority considering uh, the other factors like I have a lot of friends over here who came here before and then uh, they've settled on here they're working here uh, they studied here so it's kind of a smooth ride for me because I know people already here so that, that helped me a bit actually so uh, that was one of the uh, one of the reasons why uh, I opted to ASU and uh, yeah so that's about how I uh, What's the reason behind why I'm choosing ASU? That that's that's a fair uh, decision to make, and uh, just so that everyone knows here, like you did master's course in project management, and the concentration was like more concentration was on data analytics. So, do we consider that it was a mixture of you know data uh, analytics subjects and project management as well? It is actually information technology and uh, project management. It's it's a mix of yeah. It's a mix of both uh, data analytics and uh, project management. So uh, uh, we have to have like we have to finish thirty credits to get a uh, master's degree here, and then uh, there'll be three focus uh, like core courses like you can say five uh, like three nine credits you have to do a mandatory courses which are into both uh, management and uh, project management and IT, and there'll be you'll be uh, left out with seven courses where you can choose from uh, electives and even uh, interdisciplinary also. So yeah, you have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, out of seven, um, I took four uh, from my focus area, which is data analytics. So it was, it was advantage in that case. That That's great. And do we have this course only in fall or does it only starts in summer? Does it only starts in spring or winter? Like, uh, does it starts like multiple times or there's just one a clear thing that okay this course only starts in fall or only in summers is it summer? uh, no no i mean no it's it's uh like both fall and spring semesters so it's open here no not in summer though okay. so you have to yeah, i mean like uh end of the day it's uh it's straight up between you want to come in spring or fall right like so uh fall have fall have its advantage and spring has its own advantages like if you want to and be eligible for uh, uh, like internships and all. You have, it's better to come in fall semester so that there's a in a, uh, USA had that rule of nine months. You have to be in this land to uh, land an opportunity, like to start working uh, probably as an intern or like some other way. So uh, that's one way. Uh, but it's it's open for both us spring and fall semesters. But people prefer coming in uh, uh, fall, I would say. So yeah. uh, because so you have more opportunities, right? So the more agree. number of courses will be available. Yeah. Yeah, and you did come up in the fall semester as well. Yeah, so it started in back uh, fall 21 August and then I dropped up in 22 December. Okay, so it's like an 18 months course, <clears throat> roughly. Uh, no, actually it's two years, but you can, uh, as long as if you can wrap up your trades, you're good to go. So it's about... Oh. Uh, okay, so that's like, nice. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, that, uh, I've seen a girl actually. I mean, she's the rarest of the kind. She has completed it in uh, four months, I think, like... She did fall, spring, and then by summer she dropped up. I never know that, uh, but that's that's a good way to end it because she got an opportunity with Amazon, and uh, she has to start full time soon. So she she took I think she she took four courses in summer. That was crazy, I would say. But yeah, that was one exceptional case. But I suggest people going for maybe one and a half year or probably mm -hmm. for the next two years. I agree because uh, I took like. Uh... Actually, I took also four subjects every semester, but it was like divided into mini semesters. So like one mini semester two, then another mini semester two, but in total it was four. So yeah, can't take four together. Like it's it's more of a pain. It'll be, it'll be hectic actually. I mean, I know, so right? There I... might be yeah, there might be a scenario you have to take four because, uh, so consider a case where uh, you have an opportunity waiting for you probably a full time opportunity that you have to start in January and. Uh, you are left with four courses. So people do take the chance, but 
uh, it's always advisable to plan it before only. No, not in yeah. the flag. You are like killing yourself with four subjects. <laughs> I am just imagining it. No, I can't. I can't with those subjects. No, at least even fall and spring, that's fine. But summer, it will be too crazy because uh, most yeah. of them it will be remote courses. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's really tough i know and when you're yeah. almost like on the verge that you're almost completing it and then you take four courses it's like it's like a you'll be, yeah you will be uh, overloaded completely i would say because you have to have some projects going on at back and then so you have the pressure of uh, completing four grades and you yeah. have to have proper good grades right i can't just do it randomly yeah. yeah i agree i agree it's it's very hectic so you mentioned in the starting that you always had plans to come to the United States for your master's. Uh, but we just wanted to know, like, you know, there are other countries as well that we see a lot of students go to like Canada or, uh, you know, UK or, you know, more towards the Europe side. So just wanted to know, like, how what was your criteria to choose US over the other countries? Obviously, you told us why you chose ASU, but why was it more of US? No, uh, to starting with mm, pretty plain simple, like land of opportunities. So you have that have back of your mind, right? I mean, even though people give multiple options, the, the first one, the topmost would be land of opportunity, the kind of uh, things you get over here. Uh, and uh, so even uh, I've made a list of four or five other opportunities also, like Canada, Australia. I have, I have compared them. And end of the day, it's a trade off between uh, what you get, right? Especially if US, I mean, USA. Uh, uh, even after your master's, you, you get some some time to work uh, where you get some practical experience or probably whatever the way. Like you have to have some mm, some rewards for your efforts, right? So that's what. But whereas in other countries, even I've uh, explored opportunity with Canada and Australia and to some extent London also. They don't have this flexibility, I believe. So uh, you'll get 36 months in USA, like one plus two years. But there, I would say two years, and you have a lot of restrictions and and also mm, like. The number of companies plays a big yeah. role, right? I mean, you have to have a good number of opportunities waiting for you. So yeah. that's an agreed uh, fact. Yeah, that's what I have heard like offline and during the podcast as well with a lot of my guests that <laughs> apart from all the countries, like US has majority options in terms of the courses as well as compared to other uh, uh, like countries that's what I saw it for myself as well and you know uh, you know you have a lot of options like you have a good platter to choose from okay I want to do this and then I'll have many options but not every country has a lot of option in terms of colleges or universities or anything of that sort so that that's a fair point there and um, considering the point of ASU uh, we know like the course that you did. So we wanted to know more about like, were there any scholarships that you were granted or were there any scholarships that you applied on your end or like anything that you researched and would like to talk about it? Um, yeah, I have to be honest with you. ASU is a little expensive. Uh, that's a known fact out there. Uh, uh, per rate will cost you around $1,600 now, 1600 one, so six, one, six, double, zero, zero. So that is a lot. When I joined, it was around 1400, some, that, somewhere there, but it's second increasing. Um, but end of the day, uh, it matters, right? If, you, if you're going for expensive, or it's not just expensive, the kind of brand value it gives you, right? So uh, the kind of uh, alumni it has, uh, the kind of opportunities it provides, right? Like if you have good alumni, uh, you have a good chance that you might be getting some better opportunities compared to your peers, right? Probably. I, would, I spent around like um, me and my wife spent around uh, 50k USD per head to get our masters done. So uh, maybe if, maybe you can offer some some like less expensive universities. But uh, when I compared that, right, the trade off was maybe ten thousand dollars extra. But you get these extra things like uh, maybe the alumni or like part time opportunities or uh, or maybe if you say. Uh, Climate is one of the main important things. You, even though it is Arizona is hot, but that is also a major factor. And you have to know people over here, right? So that is also a few factors. I have a list actually. I made Excel like check marks. If this is matching me, I'm going. It's not just plain that I came to AS, ASU. Uh, I have my uh, options and, uh, that yeah. that well with me. So that was one of the reason. But yeah, uh, coming to scholarships, uh, ASU is little miser on this aspect. <laughs> 
యా నేను హావ్ వన్ మేజర్ వన్ న్యూ అమెరికన్ స్కాలర్స్ యూనివర్సిటీ స్కాలర్షిప్ ఐ గెస్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ అ జీపీ ఆఫ్ అపౌ నైన్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ ఇండియా యూ గెట్ అరౌండ్ సిక్స్ థౌసండ్ డాలర్స్ స్కాలర్షిప్ పర్ సెమిస్టర్ ఇఫ్ ఐమ్ నాట్ ఐ క్యాన్ షేర్ యూ ద లింక్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఇట్ హ్యాండీ మేబి ఐ క్యాన్ షేర్ ఇట్ మేబి కెన్ ఆడిట్ యూ లెటర్ బట్ యా ఈవెన్ అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ దట్ ఇఫ్ యూ సో ఇఫ్ యూ ఎంక్వైర్ అదర్స్ రైట్ ఐ మీన్ లైక్ some people even without having nine gp also had people getting uh, uh, scholarships uh, like considering their background or probably uh, if you say they have good experience professional experience you would say like multiple factors it's not just about study or academics they look into multiple aspects and they may give scholarships and even once you land here also if you get a ta position or a position i've seen people getting their whole semester fees way off additionally you'll be paid for a uh, uh, year as a part time like partier positions right so prime example is my cousin itself like uh, her name is manogna she got uh, a ra position i think uh, last semester for fall 22 23 actually her entire semester fees got waived off and she got stipend of per hour 30 dollars i mean like uh, like a part time uh, part time fee or whatever uh, uh, money you would say but it was a crazy thing right i mean uh, in this case half of your fees is gone and uh, that's that will happen even after you come here also so if you do well in academics you uh, apply for scholarships there is a, there's always an outside chance right so yeah they do have it okay but, and but yeah they sorry. don't give, oh, sorry they don't give anything by default like international students uh no not by default uh, by default you might get a new american scholarship so if you have 6 gp or around uh 9 gp i'm sorry uh so 9 and above uh, but um, without that i don't really think there is anything but once you land here uh, you have that opportunity maybe you can try uh, the other is okay. like showing a gp and uh, uh, these days uh, people are fighting actually to uh, uh, have uh, there are three things ta re and grader so people just i've seen people on linkedin keeping uh, even grader portion also ta and re like there's a lot of difference between three portions right ta ra and grade is completely different so these just people are asking even for grade portions also to give a uh, scholarship or like fee way of the time to get it so we have the option like uh, once you come here but default probably new american scholarship uh, so is the only thing i believe but yeah uh, there would be new opportunities coming up so maybe you can yeah. check I, i'll drop you the link there anyway sure yeah that that would be helpful uh, we'll have everything linked uh, like below the video as well but one more question on the scholarship before we move on to the next section is uh, do we have like certain provisions that okay if you get like a certain gpa in your first semester you get something in your further semesters or you get like certain wave off anything of that that kind of a provision if asu has uh, not really sure uh, but uh... but there are plans actually uh, by the time i was graduating uh, there were discussions happening about this like people who have better gpa like 4 or 4 and above like they should be getting some kind of uh, uh, what do you say uh, benefit or like some kind of scholarship some some kind of uh, additional things for uh, to help them uh, even I, i know that you will get probably 2000 some some kind of benefit will be there if you have more than 4 gpa that i got in at my last semester but yeah uh, but you have to explore on those opportunities but uh, didn't really look, looked into it but yeah so that's okay. one way okay thank you that that's that's really helpful for anyone actually coming up to asu so that they can get their head straight that you know you would not get a lot of support um if you like we are all falling into the Uh, series where not everyone has that 9 gpa back in india so you know you have to prep up better if you're coming to asu so that's that's a fair point and next is uh, can you talk about and in like elaborate the process that you went through with asu with your the selection process starting from filling up the application and what all they needed as part of your application and how things went by if there were any interviews or any video submissions anything like how was it for asu uh, uh with asu it's pretty straight forward but for for other industry, other industries there are some video interviews and all used to be there but i'll talk more about asu uh, so uh, uh the thing is uh, uh, so i applied i mean i connected with a uh, 
i don't say consultancy he's kind of mentor to me i still talk to him quite often his name is arun uh, he's from uh, bangalore actually uh, he's he has a llc it's called edutrust people might know it already he's quite famous back in bangalore so uh, i connected with him uh, like uh, for at least for the documentation purpose not for other things anyhow uh, academics or maybe uh, sops lors i have it handy but uh, so how to proceed on all we have we are little uh, confused or maybe in kind of doubtful way so since it's just not one it's two like me and my wife has to be doing it together right so documentation part we left to him and then he took care of uh, applications we provide our sops we are we refined our sops we didn't rely on anyone uh I, we got our lowers so uh, we have our experience certificates everything handy so we just submitted to asu and even application was done by our end also so um, i think uh, so these guys back in india most of the people are probably if you are going to consultancy end of the day it will reach to kaplan if i'm not wrong so there's there's one big entity known as kaplan kaplan will connect with asu and then uh, they will file your application so this is a different process but i got to know it uh, back then only but yeah so who will come to asu if they are from consultancy probably it might be through kaplan so that's one way and um, yeah so uh, yeah that's that's from uh, application purpose perspective like you have to uplo- upload your uh, docs you have to submit like some 75 or 60 dollars i not really remember the number like application fee actually so also yeah and then you have submitted took around uh, maybe uh, one month time for for to get the uh, confirmation i think uh, we applied uh, by end of feb and we had that in the month of uh, april i guess yeah we have enough time to prepare for visa visa interviews also so we got it so by mid of april we got to know we both got admit and then we proceed for the next steps and even while applying for i20 right yeah you get your admit you will have to go for i20 right so that's where you have to show your funds and all mm-hmm. so so that's also one aspect actually uh, so you know one of the questions you you should you posted me right so it was there so for i20 is people show money in the bank accounts you can do in the other way like if you have good relationship with one of your banker right you can go and ask them like for a approval letter not a sanction letter they will provide a approval letter approval uh, so loan approval letter so that is not that they won't charge you anything for that for sure because i've went through that process get the document probably some 40 lakhs ir or something and then show it for your i20 so start study will get your i20 also okay so going back into the process um how many lors uh, were asked from the university i think it's three yeah three. so most of most of the universities ask for three but yeah so as asked for three i guess yeah okay and any test scores that they expected uh, for you to upload along with the application yes yes it is required few few uh, at least uh, one english proficiency be it ielts or uh, tofel or duolingo Mm-hmm. so we we i have ielts and dueling also got okay. 7 and 7.5 we both got 7.5 similar scores okay. and gre uh, was waived off for that period because uh, it's covid period time and uh, gre was waived off but now they are asking uh, and you would require i think uh, more than 300 i think 310 like based on your profile if you have experience okay. they are okay with 300 but if you don't have experience back in the probably they last for 310 then you are good to and uh, yeah scores scores matter a lot so just to you know recollect everything so you had to submit three lors one sop uh, one english proficiency test and that's all that was needed as part of the application it depends on the major if you are opting for cs they for sure will ask gre so you have to have your gre okay okay so. got it and there was nothing like essays or anything that was uh... oh no it's covered in sop okay got it so do you like as part of the sop do you get like separate questions as well there that you have to... um no you have to tune it right i mean okay um, that way okay got it so you have to do it i mean they may not ask you but you have to show sop is where the place you boast yourself right i have done this one this one that's that's the thing so irrespective of whether they ask you or not but you have to showcase no yeah because when i was filling up my application form for my university so they asked me sop lor the same test scores and everything but they also uh, gave us couple of questions that we had to send out recording us like a video uh, record for us and then answering those questions and they were basically like 
life questions and you had to answer it and send them back that, that was there for other universities i believe it's for the university of cincinnati had that thing i know uh, they asked for uh, um, like video recording and even northeastern university also yeah also, they also i have. believe mm -hmm. yeah okay so this was more of like you submitted everything and we are now heading into the section where you know we talk more about the visa experience and how was it for you um considering you got your admit in april and you had to join it in august so how was your experience back in 2021 with the appointments and the interview and how was that for you uh, so the primary reason why I connected with Arun, I mean, I do because editors, uh, I mean, I, I call him Arun Sarun. So Arun Sarun is because of his track record of uh, like visa interest. Trust me, I've seen people who got rejected like four or five times or maybe 10 times also. He'll make sure you get it right. You get your visa for sure. It's not about, uh, I'm not boasting about him. It's, it's kind of rigorous visa process, actually. He'll train you as if you're going for some SD3 portion on Amazon, that's hard. So if, you, if you're enough to make him satisfied, there are nine, no, not nine, no, hundred percent chance that you're gonna get your visa. So he'll he'll try me such hard. So, but yeah, so soon after when I got my admits, so it's forward, straight forward pass. I have to get for, get my I20. And then, um, no, as you mentioned, uh, there were no visa slots available. That's peak COVID time. Uh, that's actually uh, probably May 21, we got our admits in 2021, April, mid. May 2021 was the second wave peak time of uh, India. Like That was the worst period. It's not COVID-1 was not bad, or was not that bad. COVID-2, everyone knows it, right? People neglected and then things became worse, right? So there were time we thought of, uh, is it going to work this time? So we had our doubts. I'll be honest with you. So. Because it was such bad, we're not getting appointments, and situation is very bad outside. You can't go out anywhere. Like some things you have to get done, right? So and then, yeah, luckily I think uh, uh, one day I think June June fourth somewhere I remember uh, we got a uh, heads up from USAs. Uh, uh, I think uh, that they're gonna not USAs. I mean the immigration that in Twitter channel that it's uh, they're gonna open slots uh, so for the visa appointments. And then mm -hmm. it was a struggle whole day. We're sitting, the site is getting crashed big time. And uh, yeah, luckily we got our uh, like appointment scheduled for July 1st and July 2nd. Uh, mine was on July 1st and uh, my wife was on July 2nd. But it's a different place. I got it in Chennai, she got it in Hyderabad. But yeah, so end of the day, at least we got it. So we got our admits and then, I um, mean appointments. And then uh, that whole one month, uh, Harun sir literally uh, made us toil hard. <laughs> Every day we used to have at least, uh, there'll be like, you know, hot seat, right? You might be watching. Yeah. TV. <laughs> It'll be like that only. Uh, we will be segregated into groups, like some seven, eight guys. People will grill you like anything. Even visa officer, not in his wildest of dream, dream might expect these questions to you. So these guys, these guys will ask you those questions. And Probably you be... your prep would be very grilling but your main interview would have been easier. That, that's nothing in main interview because all the questions were, I mean, it's by heart for me. And and, and it was, it was a, I, mean, no, I mean, like preparation should be there, but it's far, far ahead of what you expect in real interview. So that's, uh, that's how it went. Even if someone is in uh, like, they're thinking to uh, about for applying or maybe, they have issues with visa rejections, right? I suggest them going for uh, Arun sir because he guided you in such a way. So it was really good. And even every, probably once in a week, I ping him, I ask him like students work. He, we are like, uh, me and my wife were, uh, what do you say, uh, popular students among him. Like <laughs> exceptional case. He never sent a couple here. And then when we did, uh, so he was like, uh, he'll show us whenever someone have a difference, you know, there was one different case also. One person, I think he's 55 years old. Okay. He came to master's, not in ASU, in the same batch, our batch 21. His name is Sampath. I still remember him. I think he's doing his uh, PhD now. So imagine a guy who is at 55 and is doing master's. I was like, seriously? Yeah. It's amazing. He, it's amazing. No, I mean, like, you got inspired from such people. 
Yeah. And uh, like if we know, if we may know, like what were the questions specifically targeted on you on your main visa day interview? Yeah, so uh, like main, uh, it's more generic only uh, about uh, why ASU, like uh, and why a USA, I mean, like, first main question they asked me and then uh, they, had, they asked me about my curriculum, like what courses they opted, uh, I opted in my first semester, because you have to have register for your courses, yeah, so like you won't get courses here easily, people are so uh, kind of a uh, fight literally for courses, so you have to know which courses are you opting for a first semester or you plan for a second and third semester also. You have to have that. You're going to you're gonna pay $50,000. You have to have a plan ready for that. And, uh, so they asked me about my courses and that's all. Um, they asked me like a couple of questions about my uh, professional experience, uh, like which company I'm working in and how long. Uh, uh, pretty normal. And not many out-of-box questions. Out-of-box questions were already explored <laughs> by my guys. So... Yeah, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, and um, so after that, like, um, w w how was your like uh, travel plan? Like, uh, you started uh, what date? Like, what date was your onboarding day at ASU? And then, if you could just let us know how was when you landed uh, in Phoenix, and how were things? How did you manage up the location and? Everything else, like how did the first couple of weeks went by? Yeah, so couple of weeks, uh, make that point. Okay, so that is one of the main aspects actually. So people who are coming to USA, I suggest them to come at least a couple of weeks ahead of your class starts. So so once you land here, uh, like uh, I plan it, we plan it actually. So my joining, my first day of classes is on August 19th and we landed here on August 4th. Um, I have my uh, place ready for me because I have people over here. Like my friends were here, so uh, they already um, chose a good place for me, and it's all there. And uh, so it was, it was all available for me. And uh, August four, I landed uh, straight away. When I came out, um, it's around one, one ten degrees. <laughs> it's around eight p.m. in Arizona, and it's burning out. So I was like. I'm in a different planet altogether because back in India, we don't see sun after 6 p.m., right? 8 p.m. here, it's, it's still bright, sunny, and even it's pretty hot. So, yeah, uh, I still can't forget those days, actually. But, yeah, uh, uh, so coming, so you have to plan, I mean, not for me, every, everyone, actually, I would say, plan at least to come here by at least two weeks before your classes, right? You have to get your bank accounts open, you have to possibly have to get your uh, uh, driving license or maybe... If you come before, you have a chance of getting patents also. Like you can go and explore, talk to people. There, some people might expect you to come in person and uh, do the interview. Not at least patents work that way on in ASO. Uh, and uh, here you have a lot of opportunities back then, but now since crowd got increased, it's a little tough now. But yeah, if you plan it well, you get it. We got our patents even back in India only, so we we planned it. So we both apply to a lot of. Uh, ASU internal job roles. Okay. So we got so we got some jobs. I mean, I work with a, a print and imaging lab so as a production so that's, okay. that's good. That's good. Like that's a note for everyone that if you plan it way ahead of time, you email the different departments and see what are the open roles and check it through the site. That would be a great help that you don't have to invest that much time when you come here and probably invest more time on your settlements and other things because obviously it's a culture shock. Uh, when you come from a different country to US. So that's a good point. And um, considering that you are now graduated, you're done with the course, and it's like an year as well, that it's it's been close to an year that you're all done with that. 16, so, 16 months. <laughs> okay, precise. 16 months to be precise. So uh, how was your uh, job search after your uh, course got completed? And how do you want to comment on that one? And how was your university, like, was there any role of ASU into that as well? Uh, so ASU does have some job fits uh, uh, happening quite often, uh, at least probably a couple of them per semester. Uh, uh, but yeah, see, uh, end of the day, it's your profile that matters. So how many job uh, phase happens in university if your profile is not good that good 
or your uh, skills is not up to the mark or your resume, resume is not up to the mark, there are very high chances that you may not land, end up anywhere, right? So you have to refine yourself, tune your resume good, and then uh, have to apply. So ASU's uh, part in jobs is for my reference, actually, because as I mentioned, alumni plays good role. Like, uh, you know, once you graduate or even when you're working, if you go trying to apply for some particular company, um, you will see hundreds of people already working in there from university. So if you go hit bug one person, uh, I don't say bug, yeah, it's a bad word. But yeah, ping one person, uh, and they're more than happy. As soon as they see uh, ASU, we call it, our mascot is uh, Sun Devil, so this way. So so if you say, hey, Sun Devil, they're more than happy to say, uh, help you to the core. So yeah, that helped me. I reached to a lot of people, actually. So uh, they, they gave me reference. Referral is never equal to job opportunity, but it gives you a step, right? At least a first yes. step, you can you can go ahead and start working on that thing. So yeah, and also um, uh, there was one one thing which uh, I missed actually. So uh, it's not just coming here and then doing part time. Right? I suggest people start here when you land here. Part times are okay. Try to concentrate more on internships. That's where I made a mistake. So uh, as soon as I got my part time, I I just uh, forgot, I didn't forget, but I left that part of internships, applying for internships. Had I applied it probably in the month of August only, because they start applying as soon as possible. It's first come first serve in USA, right? So it's not, they won't wait for it. best candidate. If you fit into their roles, you're good to go. So I wasted around three, four months, I believe. August, September, October, I think I started around November end for applying internships. By the time a lot of them got over and there are very few by the time also. So yeah. Even though I applied a lot in spring, I hardly got calls. Uh, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, probably my resume was not up to much. I didn't tune my resume good, so I was not little lazy to be honest with you. So, so but yeah, uh, uh, I but but there was a backup plan for me. So I know if I don't get internship, at least we both got didn't get internships. We wanted to complete at least one course in summer, so that uh, we'll be getting only three in final semester so that we can wrap up. We have our plan uh, set already. Like we want to graduate by December 22, irrespective of what's at that situation. Uh, so uh, we graduated, um, uh, it was tough period, 22 December uh, was the, I would say was the triggering point of uh, what is this layoffs. I don't say it's a resistant, it's not resistant to be honest. Resistant is complete shutdown, but it's not resistant because banking, is in good space. Remain all sectors are in good space except IT. So, so there are even automobile or maybe electrical. They are good. They are getting good jobs. But only in IT sector you are facing some issues. There are multiple reasons. Maybe companies yeah want. I mean, I don't want to comment on them because everyone has their own things, right? So, but yeah, we graduated in 22 December, and then uh, I don't say struggle. We have our plan set. Uh, uh, applying. I have to have some strategy. I had my strategy set already. So I used to change them quite often, get uh, as many interests as possible. Yeah, I got one offer in, I, we were, to be honest with you, we were riding against the tide at that time. So because people are getting fired, we are trying for jobs. So imagine the situation. And by uh, Jan and we both uh, got offers, but mine went on to hold, but she got her job. So it's fine. And uh, even then after that, I also applied. Uh, yeah, there was some strategies I followed. Uh, so, I guess the time was bad since 2022 because I came in the fall of 2022 and that's when I was applying for my CPT and it was really a struggling time. I got it in summer and not in spring. So um, I agree to that point. It was bad back then, like 2022. 2023 was worse as well but what we see right now is on a different trajectory altogether like uh everyone has their own strategies I had my own and you know it just used to be adaptive with every change but still somehow this time is not passing by like you know you still are not getting to that point where we see okay there are a lot of positions people are now getting jobs but still we're on to that point that there is still a freeze there's not much uh intake in any organizations and there's some of the other layoffs happening here or there so we're still into that phase that we're still declining only because I see a lot of my juniors a lot of folks that reach out to me on LinkedIn and probably you as well and everyone's struggling like 
whatsoever the tricks are somewhere now not working and 2022 was just like the start of it that you know the recession started and we all were into that shell mode so but it's luckily good for both of you that you people got the jobs more or less like closer to each other but at least you're into that space that uh that you got it but you know the times were really bad i agree to that point because i um, was there as well yeah so um like people who graduated along with me in 22 december uh, to be honest with you like some folks are still searching for jobs i know people are in that phase uh, very few got uh, but yeah even who got jobs got laid off and the biggest uh, problem is like happened with amazon because asu uh, from amazon takes a lot of students from asu asu or northeast university utd these certain number of university they, they get jobs from amazon pretty easy right back in 21 22 a lot of people joined and they got laid off in 23 so they are also into the pool they are also into the market they have good experience compared to probably me or maybe some kind of fresher who into the market now right so but yeah first off but um, yeah uh, and also like um, someone if, if someone say that uh, they're not able to get jobs uh, they're not able to get more interviews it's it's more towards uh, their approach actually if i talk about see uh, i see people spending a lot of time on linkedin there is a funny thing uh, right some some kind of random recruiter might say uh, keep like type interested in a, in a chat box um, or in the comment section you you going to get something out of you how is that even possible so and people are feeling i mean i could see hundreds of comments on that i mean interested just doesn't give you any job pretty basic thing right you have to go and apply some random i don't you his profile is not at all even complete that particular recruiter so uh, i don't i mean maybe hard hard word i would say i don't apply from linkedin linkedin is i would say around 70 to 80% jobs on linkedin are fake they're not at all existing to be honest with you most of them were posted by consultancies to lure people into their consultancy so uh, what i do I mean, like my strategy was to apply from glassdoor so glassdoor as you can apply from there right? even i suggest to my juniors also like apply from there it's because the number of jobs are very less in glassdoor but they're genuine jobs you can tune your resume apply for it i got a lot of calls from uh, glassdoor if i applied so that helped me a lot that was my strategy actually even i have made a list of uh, domains that i need to apply banking insurance healthcare automobile so each domain i used to set top top 10 companies in this domain and then i used to apply to them i'll be I, i didn't even apply maybe 10 or 15 per day so the max probably that's it number of applications so that reduces my count of applications drastically which way i can spend a little more time on tuning application people say i have applied to 2000 jobs 3000 jobs but where where did you apply did you apply did you apply easy job that's not that's not the way how i apply how you won't uh, end up with anything if you do that so a real job application will be in a different way altogether yeah that's correct and um, i have also seen people you know leaning towards a lot towards linkedin but you know there are a lot of other platforms as well that you should explore probably you know uh, also going through the main websites of like the career sites of all the organizations and directly go there get a referral or probably apply from there directly and you know then touch base with who is the recruiter from the same organization on linkedin probably but just not one source like making linkedin as the one source i'll uh, tell you how uh, what was the real matter what was my approach actually i i had my domains listed so 7 days a week one day one domain tech company uh, check at least i only have probably one or two jobs in each career space so if you go through uh, glassdoor right you hardly see probably one or two to the max you won't see beyond that okay that company uh put out that company name in the linkedin check out people set uh like try to reach out recruiters or maybe your alumni use linkedin for connections not for applications use i mean like if you want to apply apply it through glassdoor or some other ways i mean even career space so the, the advantage with glassdoor is that it guide you to career space only instead of there are few uh, apply with something is there but most of them will uh, uh, land up you to career space so that if the position is not there that's what we're going to do but whereas whereas in case of linkedin right 
anyone can you or me also can post a job technically we don't have anything so that's what happening so it's just well people are literally wasting time actually other time so the which is not good and people are not able to catch that point here so yeah just to it like mention the point you know i guess the same strategies would have worked years back but now the times are different now the pool has increased like there are a lot of folks who are unemployed and then every year the fresh graduates are adding up to that pool so you know you need to change up your strategies you need to you know get out you know in a more organic way like career side or maybe in person career fairs or you know through referrals or through some summits like local meetups that you attend and then you touch base with folks anything but just not sticking to one platform that may have worked before but now it's i don't think so would work yeah completely agree with you so strategies won't will be evolving every time you have to change you have to come up with new strategies one if one is working for you may not work for the other person but yeah uh, you have to build on uh, your own ideas right so but yeah uh, I, yeah enough there that's to the person's uh, yes i agree that's a, that depends on every person to person there are people for whom like a particular strategy strategy works up but for others yeah. that doesn't works up so yeah, it, it's very unique to everyone so what works for me may not work may not work for me yeah so but yeah that's the only thing that you can just know what is everyone doing and then deduce how things work up for you so that's that so that's a fair point there as well and just a very fun scenario that i wanted to ask you uh to the time when you came here for your masters that one situation like let's just limit to one situation each that whatever you thought back from india that okay uh this thing would really be a mess for me and let's just you know work for it but it went like a cake walk and one thing that you thought would be a cake walk or oh, that i would easily do it but that was a big mess up here when you came up like something like which became opposite to each other uh i'll talk about uh, uh messing up things actually i mean like so internship was one thing so i thought was it would be a cakewalk for me because the kind of experience i have uh, uh i'm carrying some bit of experience right so i think it's around 5 years if i'm not wrong so when i joined the masters so i thought it will be cakewalk for me but things went upside down uh, didn't work out but even in that case i have my backup plan ready for me so things go well i'll go for industry if not i'll do one course so that i my course work will be easy for my third semester so that i can wrap up in december 22 and uh, uh not in india but here right when when i graduated i thought that i won't be getting job so easily so um, i thought it going to take me around 6 months to easy it because it was such bad actually so um, uh, bad is a very small word i would say for disasters uh a uh, couple of months uh, proper strategy every day uh, having a proper routines like wake up uh, go for a walk uh, so or take coffee or whatever you like and then apply study for some time talk to people uh, uh, probably i'll i hate gym most of them every day or i'll play badminton so routine was set i know it's just around the corner but uh, there was always this doubt right in your mind whether is is uh, going right or not until an, another day you get the offer yeah it's yes you won't be knowing right so uh, i thought probably december when we graduated uh, uh, like this not going to be we're not going to be in a good place for next few months uh, i expect i expect we to get jobs like maybe around june somewhere but it was uh, the other one we got it early actually i thought the struggle would be even more harder but yeah uh, i don't know whether i'm lucky whether uh, things worked out or not but at the end of the day it was no it's, it's good. i guess what i've heard so far about your journey and what everyone would think as well see it's always a mixture of luck and hard work and we see the hard work like everyone does that but it's just you know the times you know that are not good or that do not work fine for you so it's it's just the both because without hard work i don't think so you get anywhere actually so that that i could see with all the conversations that that we did that was there and obviously there was a bit of luck factor as well so hard works I mean i don't know I mean like um, people generalize hard work but i would say 
have a proper routine like if you have a proper routine things will fall into place eventually people say people talk about talk, uh, doing things out of box or like why to have out of the box things just keep everything in your box only so like pretty pretty non thing right i mean have to if your if, if your body is fresh your mind will be in good space i used to get rejections like right like every day uh, the day before i applied and jobs every next day i used to get rejection i was like it's okay fine uh, i even i used to search for any uh, feedback in those rejections i used to take this advantage right so uh, there was one more strategy like every monday i don't know whether that people know it or not every, linkedin has 150 limit count for uh, sending invitations right so by monday afternoon my 150 will get over so every week before only Same. before week before a week only my uh, i know whom i have to send up i mean the connection request because recruiters all of me so i have my list ready sent it by probably two days or three days time i hardly used to get at least 10 or 15 requests accepted and probably one or two people will be replying back that's all i need i'm more than happy because someone is help reaching you right it's not just job they may guide you to some other place some folks right uh, a couple of folks from i think uh, facts at cvs i think discover this recruiters really help me i mean like, it's not just job they told me uh, how can i approach so that that is that is also one thing right i mean there was failure but there is success in that failure also use that thing as your tool like that, that yeah. that's one thing i know it's it's a difficult time emotionally uh, it's it depends on how you cope up with it but i just want to say like there's no other option like you can't cry on it every day you have to get stronger and that's what i've learned from this country like it does make you that that you have to you know hustle every day like for everything for anything so if one day you just sit and cry it won't come back to you like cry, if crying would have helped i would have gotten zillions of offers like i can say it out and loud right now but that will not help you you have to get up every day and you have to be consistent with your routine and that's where your hard work pays off that okay you have been consistent and you have been doing it every day some day it would it would you know come back to you but not crying or you know cribbing or ranting would help exactly i mean like uh, crying doesn't take you anywhere like rather than wasting time and crying use the crying period to apply for a job or like learn something right do something go <laughs> maybe i'm boasting myself but yeah so my step count used to be 15000 or 20000 while i was applying jobs daily step count it used to be that crazy that crazy right yeah. every morning one hour every day evening one hour i used to talk to people that time my walking period is like there's something a walk and talk i do so if there is a meeting i do it uh, through car through like parking only right and that helped me that helped me to set my routines also and uh, as i mentioned hustle every day so when you sent me this question right i made my notes like what to talk uh, one of my point is that only in the land of opportunities infinite opportunities i would say you have to hustle every day to move to the next level things won't come to you they won't keep you in a platter you have to go and fetch that it is there it is available right in front of you go and grab it but put your effort before. grabbing that thing is it shows your efforts right so you have to go and get that thing i agree and um couple of quotes that really make sense for you know when you leave your own country and come to a new one and you know when you have to study you have to cook you have to clean you have to search for a job and then other thing also have to fall in picture you know it just looks glittery from outside but you know we are working for it every day like for example right now we're sitting off our work hours like in between our work hours i would say and we're doing this just because you know we could also help the community back and this is how you know you fit in a lot of new things in your uh, routine as well so that's what what i have felt and what i guess everyone has come here and talked as well that you know this country really teaches you a lot and you become that positive and you know from all those struggling periods and then you know the value of what you have gotten and that's the opportunity and everything completely this country is built on uh, a basic moral actually uh, survival of the fittest if you are strong enough you going to survive here if you're not if you're weak this is not the place for you maybe i'm not saying i'm not discrediting anyone but that's how things work here like 
you have to be aggressive you have to be uh, proactive you have to take chances as simple as that uh, uh, like uh, you mentioned right uh, this thing uh, like you get chances here and there and then grabbing it yeah so or maybe every small thing is a chance someone i would say like uh, yeah. right from choosing your roommates when you got admit right mm-hmm. to the time you graduate everything is a chance so you always have chances but you have to grab them you have to take right chances that's that's yeah. where it falls if it is like 51 49 i'm more than happy to go for it like i don't want 80 or 90 it should be 51 because you never know that 51 can turn to 90 or 95 so so uh, like even while coming here like a lot of people uh, Uh, told me like no need to um, we we are, we're doing well back in india like we both are working we both married or recently married actually so we, we got our money we that's nothing but we're like i don't want to get settled for small things it's not it's not just about money i want to change so it's okay let let me explore this opportunity also why should i i'm glad that my wife is also on same line so we work together that that was one good thing happened for me like since we are in the same place right cooking cleaning uh, part times everything we should together like i mean you I mean, as i mentioned you one is better than know. two yeah that that, exactly. that i would totally agree so we don't come in again we don't have schedules you do they don't like that but clean things she cooks she cooks and things goes all the way at least 50% of my you know, things got sorted over there only i have a good partner at my room at my home <laughs> so it's not it's not as uh, for me as easy for the others i know uh, like the bachelors it's tough for them you know if they are freshers they might not experience this culture and all together uh, they don't know what to eat they don't know how to cook stuff but so generally i would suggest people coming over here like have at least work for a couple of years back in india that would really give a chance it's not about professional experience so that will teach you how to manage your finances also like how to deal with things right so you have to have that uh, uh, knowledge of handling things so site after if you come to after batches if you come here right get you'll be facing hardship because people will will be with different mentalities you have to get accustomed to them you have to be flexible so it's not it's not pretty easy but yeah uh, and as you mentioned things are flash on instagram i don't don't believe all those things they'll still be uh, i just wanted to say they'll still be flashier and glittery on instagram we'll never show you the bad side of it <laughs> never flash things are only 5% someone to be honest with you only only that moment right i mean these just people are showing the reality also some people are doing really good content thinking that you know us is not about going for hikes taking selfies and posting at instagram you have to do a lot of stuff things are changing i would say i'm not hike to use instagram i hardly use it probably once in a week for 10 15 minutes i i don't have it on my mobile also uh, but yeah so off topic so but but for the people who are coming right don't get uh like attracted by things that's been shown on instagram so it's not that it, don't work that way so because it's a very to... big investment that you make and uh, it's something that you're investing it for two years or three years and then things come out for you so yeah i guess there was a fair discussion of talking about you know how you have to deal up with a lot of things here and it's just not one or two or three there's a lot of things you get in a platter that you have to deal with so that mental strength and everything has to be there uh, or it just you have to be ready to develop it all through that time so i guess that was a great discussion and we have discussed a lot about uh, asu and i guess that would be a great help to a lot of folks so before we end this podcast any last parting words for the students who are wishing to come to asu anything that as part of the alumni group you want to share uh so for it's not just about as you uh, be it, be it in university but say uh, do your own research before coming to usa because there is no written back flight so easily because there will be a lot on your head uh, which you can't even imagine a kind of pressure or the emotional stress you have it here it's enormous there is no measure there's no quantity to measure also so so do your uh, uh, ba- uh, proper research before coming here and yeah so and even after coming here also it's never going to be easy people who come here before 10 years also they're still struggling so things won't be easy uh, come with flexible mindset 
so you have to adjust with things you have to get get along with people uh, get used to here then things will fall into place and uh, be proactive talk to people like learn new things like uh, like so my motto which be more about uh, more about being flexible like so the more flexible you are it's not just about changing your uh, goal or anything so the way you approach should be flexible like even the goals can be changed though but yeah but approach should be flexible and um, you have to be here have to have that mentality that so i have to I have to get this thing done um, things will fall into place i would say yeah I agree. um as you uh, if you're coming here i to get uh, <laughs> we would see uh, 115 120s very often at least in uh, <laughs> this was the thing i should be talking at the first but yeah Arizona is hot. Arizona is really hot. And by the way, it's not desert. By the way, so it's Arizona. It's not desert. It's it's terrain. It's mountains. Uh, we call it as valley. So it's like bowl shape. Uh, so uh, a lot of heat will be inside the bowl. So that's why it's more hot. It's dry heat. It's not like India, where you get a bit of sweat or tan or all easily. But here, it's more towards dry heat. It won't make you tan, but it will make your skin. burn like anything like you keep your hand on your stove right feels like that only <laughs> and you'll be fine uh, probably only 3 months uh, june or maybe may june july or august the max 4 months if you uh, i don't even say struggle because we don't be outside 24 by 7 right only unless until we have something we go uh, like people who are who talks about ours and talk about heat also it's not that bad here it is good only we are surviving people are surviving from 1900s only so we have ac uh, running throughout the time so it's very good and uh, it's it's uh, i like arizona i mean i moved to florida for five months last year because of my wife's job uh, actually we both are working remotely i mean but uh, our company asked her to be there for a few months so we did that florida is beautiful but arizona is my home so everyone who is coming to arizona you are most welcome this is a nice nice place it's not what you what people show what people talk about is it hot it's not like that you can manage great i guess you clarified my uh, you know doubts as well that it's not a desert like i should not say much i'm from texas like right now so we get the most of the heat as well here so good luck to both of us the summer days are coming for us over 105 110 degrees but rest assured um, i really want to thank again for you taking out time discussing all these things and we'll have your uh, linkedin profile below uh the description so that everyone could reach out to you and you know have more questions which we may not have discussed here but they could discuss with you personally and thanks to everyone who was watching and stay tuned for more episodes on the podcast thank you thank bye. you so much bye bye